everyone this is sai krishna i am your current affairs faculty here so today as it is our very first class of current affairs let me introduce the topic first then we will step on to the actual topic so just let me confirm whether i am audible for everyone yeah okay fine then so let's start the session now see the this is the app this is the telegram channel of abhyas if you are not uh if you did not join in that group please join with this qr code or simply search abhyas law prep so that you will be getting a daily updates of news what to read in the newspaper and from that news we will be asking 5 gk questions on a daily basis and you will get the word of the day and legal passages everything okay you will be getting all sort of examination support in this particular channel okay if you are not the member of the particular group please join in that group so that you will be getting daily updates you will be uh, stay updated with the current affairs and these current affairs will be available on all working days except one or two days okay so except on sundays and public holidays we may not be able to update this but on every working day you will be getting 95% of the times you will be getting the current affairs so at the morning at 10 to 11 am we will be get, you will be uh, updated with what to read in the newspaper and in the evening session you will be getting 5 gk questions so this is this is how we will, you can stay updated with the current affairs okay next so how, how many of you uh, have knowledge of current affairs clat the importance of current affairs for clat examination as you are here for preparing clat examination so how many of you have the knowledge of uh, importance of current affairs how many questions uh, you will be getting in clat examination from current affairs section how many questions you will get in clat examination from current affairs any idea i think you are also writing the mock exams right yeah i got one answer it is approximately 30 as per the latest syllabus earlier CLAT exam will be conducted for 150 marks, but now it has reduced to 120 marks. Out of 120, the number of questions from current affairs is around 28 to 32. The number of questions from current affairs is from 28 to 32. So you may expect 28 questions, you may expect 30, it may expect 32 because the CLAT consortium, the examiner, did not give the exact data. how many questions we are going to ask but they have given a range of questions from 28 to 32 we may ask any number of questions so assume we may get 28 questions in current affairs and are you aware that all questions are based on passages are you aware that all questions are based on passages yeah so now let's see the passage first see any for any examination for your preparation first you need to know how the questions are asking in the exam first you need to search the previous year's questions in order to prepare any other exam or to crack any other exam first you need to know how they are asking the questions so this is this how they are asking the questions i will display on the screen this is how they, they will ask the questions this is the passage first let us have a basic look on the passage for 1 minute by looking into the passage what did you understand regarding which topic this passage is talking yeah it's agriculture so by looking into the passage you can able to say this passage is talking about agriculture okay so that means on agriculture examiner has asked seven questions this is previous year's passage last december your seniors have written the exam so this passage was taken from that question paper so they have asked seven questions on this passage question number 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 all these seven questions are from the same passage but the thing is you may not able to answer any question from this particular passage if you read this entire passage you cannot able to answer one single question also because this passage is only for reference this passage is only for reference that means 
from one particular passage from from one particular topic the examiner will be going to ask questions on agriculture that's it so by looking into the passage you may not able to answer questions let us look into the questions largest exported product from india so nowhere in the passage you will get the answer according to provisional data so what is the data what is the value of what is the value of india's agriculture products so answer is 50.21 billion can you able to find identify the 50.21 billion in this passage there is no not even a single number here and who among the following is the father of wheat revolution so anywhere can you find the answer here there is just mention of the word rice wheat pulses fruits vegetables this is only mentioning about the keep words that's it so but the question which they are going to ask you may not able to find the answer in the passage so next india is the world's largest producer of which of the following so it is answer is milk actually but nowhere in this passage you will identify that answer that means all seven questions has a link here all seven questions are related to agriculture only right first question rice it is about largest agriculture product it is about rice it is about value of agriculture export wheat revolution largest producer india's ranking in hunger it is about msps minimum support price this is about agriculture technology so all seven questions has a connection here all seven questions are linked to the agriculture topic but by simply looking into the passage you may not able to answer any of the question okay so that means for the first thing you have to do for final examination is that you should forget about reading passage if in the question this they if they ask what is x in the passage so here somewhere in the passage they will mention x somewhere in the passage here it, it was not mentioned but somewhere in the passage they will mention x then they will ask what is x so only for that purpose passage is useful so you need not read the entire passage you have to know this passage is talking about something so as this passage is talking of agriculture you have to expect all seven questions will be based on agriculture okay so then how to answer these questions as you cannot able to find answers in this particular passage how can you answer all these questions this can be answered only through reading newspapers all this data is available in the news because they asked this question because this exam was conducted in december in the month of february government has introduced the budget every february government introduces the budget so in that budget government has given this data so in the newspapers they have published this data so by reading the newspapers or doing the google search you can able to find answers for this so first thing you have to do don't read this entire passage just look what this passage is talking about then directly jump to the questions so in newspapers you have to read the topics which are repeated because if if it is simply talking about one particular thing see budget why they have asked a question on agriculture it was in the budget budget is not a one day process right budget has introduced in the month of february in the month of march april they will discuss ultimately in the month of may in the month of april or may they will approve the budget that means for over a period of 2 2 3 months they will discuss on the budget you can see the articles on the budget so next topic it is talking about by looking into the passage let me know regarding what topic the passage is about yeah it's about fifa it's about football sports last year in the month of november fifa world cup has conducted so that is not a single day event the world cup has conducted over a period of time and that is just before the exam so they have asked a question on that on fifa they have asked seven questions again so if you look into the questions what is the name of the arm band which has been replaced with one so here they have mentioned one so in the passage 
here it was mentioned as one so as a result of fifa's restrictions on players wearing one rainbow armbands so what is that one what is that armband that is a question only for that purpose you have to look the passage so this is a news this is a newspaper so for wearing this armband players were banned and there is lot of controversy on uae because uh, where this fifa connected uae or qatar qatar so there is a lot of controversy on qatar qatar has committed human rights violations so how can qatar uh, conduct this fifa world cup there is a lot of ruckus in the newspaper so they have taken question from the same and this arm band this one love is in favor of this lgbtq only okay so this is one of the one of the system where qatar is facing a controversy kafala system it is about migrants so all these things are in the newspapers only so first thing you have to do while preparing for current affairs you have to follow newspaper and the examiners clearly mentioning the source they have taken this passage from economic times so if it is covered in economic times even in hindu tabar also it will be covered even times of india also it will be covered that means they are directly taking passage from the newspapers so newspaper is important for you to read newspaper is your holy book for attempting the current affairs and as they are asking 28 questions it is almost 25 percentage of weightage so without attempting the current affairs you cannot able to enter into the national law university because it is 25 percent weightage then how to follow these current affairs so our class is about that only how to approach all these topics so first thing you have to keep in mind whichever is repeating in the newspaper read that news study about that study about the history now reason now it is now manipur crisis is in news manipur violence, violence in manipur violence in uh, there is a russia ukraine war this is rahul gandhi was arrested all these topics are repeating in the news so know about that history why there is a crisis in manipur what happened in manipur what is happening now and gk points so who is the cm of manipur who is the governor of manipur when did manipur join in india because they are asking gk questions also regarding particular topic so they are asking current affairs as well as gk but all these questions are linked to the particular passages look here father of wheat revolution so do do india has a new father here the father of wheat revolution he was the only one he is the only one person who is from 1960s onwards so this is a static gk question largest producer static gk india ranking of 2022 recent ranking so they are asking current affairs as well as gk but all these are, are related to one particular passage agriculture okay so while preparing for any topic please keep in mind you need to know the history of the topic as well as what is happening now and gk questions from the topic so how how do we know what is important and what is not important mm. for that purpose only we have created telegram channel daily news updates so in the telegram channel we will give what to read in the newspaper what topics are important what to read on those topics we will ask 5 gk questions on daily basis if you read that news you can able to answer questions if you don't read that news you cannot able to answer that questions okay is it clear am i clear any doubts here am i clear yeah let's jump into the topic what about the current affairs till now yeah that's what we are discussing now so the present classes the current affairs which we are going to discuss now is belongs to march april may uh, may april may june because for exam point of view let's again look into this this was taken from the month of may this passes because budget was introduced in february it was passed in april so it is in news february march april so this was taken from april and may next 
FIFA is just before the exam in the month of November. Next, this is about uh, artificial intelligence, AI chatbot. So chat GPT, there is a news regarding chat GPT, which you might have heard about that. So that is also in the just before the exam is a month of October, November. And next. Okay, so these are sample passages. That means all the questions, all the passages are taken just before six months before the examination. You have to read minimum of six months of current affairs. That what we are doing now. The present class is talking about April, May, June current affairs. So from April, we are discussing the current events. And the, if you talk about a current event, suppose if you talk about a Russia-Ukraine war, Russia-Ukraine war is happening from 2021 onwards. So even if you talk now, we are talking about two years current affairs. So all the topics which we are discussing are repeated topics. Okay. So strictly follow the classes and follow the Telegram channel. You will be updated with all the important info. And in the Edmark portal, every month we will be giving news board, which is nothing but a magazine. So from January to December, you will get all the current affairs. Already every month we are releasing that. So if you miss any topic, just open that news board, just search what are the important topics in the month of June, important topics in the month of April. So and it is we have detailed, we have explained in detail regarding exam point of view. OK, so all the required resources we already gave you. So you need to utilize that you have news board, you have telegram channel and you have current affairs classes. So all these three resources use perfectly so that you will not miss any important current affairs topics. OK. Am I clear? Did I solve your doubt? Yeah. Next, let us jump into the topics. The first topic which we are going to deal is Polity and governance in fall polity topics of April, May, June. Three months current affairs we are discussing now. All the important polity topics and governance governance topics of April, May, June. In the next class, we'll discuss discuss about international affairs. Third class, we'll discuss about business and sports. Next, geography and environment. Next, science and technology, defense. So all topics of March. April, May or May, April, May, June will be discussed in these classes. OK, every month. After after six classes from the seventh class onwards, we'll be discussing current affairs based on monthly wise. So as you have recently joined here. So first we will discuss the Misro topics. Next, we will discuss based on monthly events. OK, so let us look. I hope everyone got these sheets. Am I right? Yeah. So first we will discuss the topics. Then based on time availability, we will discuss the questions and answers also. Because if you listen to the topics carefully, you can able to answer all these questions. OK, so first let us discuss the topics. So here the first topic is about Rahul Gandhi case disqualification of an MP. Disqualification of an MP, the case of Rahul Gandhi. What happened to Rahul Gandhi? Let's discuss. See, recently in 2019, during election campaign, Rahul Gandhi has given this statement. Why do all thieves, be it Nirav Modi, Lalit Modi or Narendra Modi, have Modi in their names? This is the statement given by Rahul Gandhi. That means he has, during the public uh, election campaign, he criticized the Modi community. Why all thieves have having the names as a Modi? So as a common man, if you listen to that statement, assume you don't know who is Modi, who is Narendra Modi, assume you don't know who is Narendra Modi. If you listen to that statement as a common man, what do you think? That means all thieves are Modi's or all Modi's are thieves. Is this the conclusion you will derive from the statement? If you don't know who is Narendra Modi, by looking into this statement, you may thinking that, okay, all Modi's are thieves. That means Narendra Modi is also a thief. 
or every person who is a thief will be having modi as their surname so that means you are insulting the modi community the person here rahul gandhi given a statement which insults the modi community because only nirav modi and lalit modi are the thieves nirav modi looted punjab national bank for 18000 crores and lalit modi is a scamster he is the founder of ipl and he then all the he introduced all the betting and gambling in cricket you might have seen the inside edge web series in amazon prime there is one web series called inside edge that web series is talking about cricket betting which was introduced by this lalit modi so these two nirav modi and lalit modi might be thieves but what about narendra modi he is a prime minister and what does all other modis done there are number of modis in india so as a common man for a common man by this statement they think that okay modis are thieves so it is nothing but insulting the modi community so on this a group of people filed a case in gujarat divisional court and gujarat divisional court has given a punishment of 2 years jail term so rahul gandhi got 2 years jail term that was given by gujarat divisional court so because he was j he is an mp right rahul rahul gandhi is an mp rahul gandhi is an mp and he is also a pm candidate in the next upcoming elections he is contesting from for prime ministership so now because he got the jail term immediately he was disqualified from lok sabha immediately he was disqualified from lok sabha so the problem here is not disqualification now if a person who has sent to jail for 2 years he cannot contest elections for 6 years after coming out of the jail that means for 2 years he got a jail term just wait a minute for 2 years he got a jail term after 2 years for the next 6 years he cannot contest elections that means total 8 years he cannot contest election within these 8 years in 2024 you will you have an election and again in 2029 you will be having an election so from now onwards if you calculate 8 years two elections will be over so now he can eligible to contest election only in 2034 so this is the problem so because he got a jail term for 2 years he cannot contest elections for next 8 years that is why it is in news so he went to high court over this case high court rejected the pay, high court rejected the petition now he is going to supreme court okay now he is going to supreme court next what are the rules on which condition under what section rahul gandhi got imprisoned let us look into that section 499 and section 500 of ipc section 499 and section 500 of ipc section 499 talks about defamation case the talks about the defamation what is a defamation so defamation is nothing but insulting the name of a person it is nothing but demeaning so what comes under defamation simply giving a speech comes under defamation or fighting back is a defamation or killing is a defamation what is a defamation so the definition of defamation given in section 499 and the punishment for what type of statement for what type of act what type of punishment you have to give so that is mentioned in section 500 in 499 they mentioned about the definition in section 500 they mentioned about the type of punishment so under these two sections rahul gandhi got two year jail term and this jail term can will be decided by the court so court can give jail term of one day or one year or two year or 10 years it is up to the courts it's up to the court to decide so if the jail term is less than two years if the jail term is assume rahul gandhi got jail term of one year and 11 months that means it is not two years right so if it is less than two years he is disqualified only for two years he can contest elections after two years 
okay if the punishment is for two and above two and above then he is not eligible to contest selections for six years this is the rule if the if the punishment is one year 11 months 29 days that means which is less than two years he, he will be jailed only for two years after two years he can simply contest any election but if the punishment is for two years and above, he cannot contest elections for the next six years after coming out of the jail. So in this case, Rahul Gandhi got two years jail term after coming out of the jail, six years. He cannot contest. So total eight years. Is it clear for everyone? Is it clear till now? Any doubts here? Yeah. Next, what are the constitutional provisions? Under what condition Rahul Gandhi got disqualified? He got punishment as per IPC section. But why he was disqualified? Why he was removed from Lok Sabha? It is Article 102. Article 102 of the Constitution talks about disqualification. IPC section talks about only punishment. If you kill the person, what is the punishment? If you beat the person, what is the punishment? So as per IPC section, Rahul Gandhi got two years jail term. But he was removed from the Lok Sabha. So that is according to Article 102. It deals with the disqualification. If any person got punishment of jail term, he will be immediately disqualified from the Lok Sabha. That is Article 102. Next, as I said, he is, he is not eligible to contest elections for six years. So where it was mentioned? It was mentioned in Representation of People Act. It was mentioned in Representation of People Act. Representation of People Act talks about all the rules and regulations which we need to follow in the elections this this rpa talks about elections uh, uh, talks about the rules of the contestants as well as rules of the voters so as a voter what is your right what you have to do as a contestant what is your right what you have to do so it talks about both the things as per section 8 to 3 of rpa if a person has convicted for not less than two years, that means two and above, that person shall be disqualified for a period of six years after coming up after his release. Okay. So this jail term, this six years period was mentioned in RPA and the disqualification mentioned in one or two article and the punishment was mentioned in IPC section. Next, in the same RPA, earlier there is a provision. This is not now. It is not in existence now, but earlier. If a person got jail term, only after three months, he can be disqualified. That means, suppose if it is in existence, Rahul Gandhi got jail term, he can continue as an MP for three months. Is this justifiable? Is that fair, fair enough? Is there any logic for that? If a person got punishment of jail term, why you have to allow the person to uh, enter into parliament? So, Supreme Court in 2013, under this particular judgment, Lily Thomas case, Supreme Court said this section 8.4 is unconstitutional. That means this particular section is not valid. It is not fair enough. That is the reason why Supreme Court removed that section 8.4 in 2013. Before 2013, it is allowed. But in 2013, court has given a judgment under Lily Thomas case. So now from 2013 onwards, it is illegal. It is unconstitutional. And as we have discussed, this defamation is a criminal offense. So who said it's a criminal offense? In Shreya Singhal case, Supreme Court said, yes, defamation is a criminal offense. Generally, criminal offense means if you hurt, if you threaten the life of any other person, there is a, that, that is called a criminal case. But defamation is simply given a statement. But because of that statement, someone may commit suicide. Because if you uh, ill-treat the Modi community, that Modi community may commit suicide, not anything can happen. So Supreme Court said in Shreya Singhal case, it is the defamation is a criminal offense. Am I clear till now? This is the issue. Rahul Gandhi has given a statement. On that statement, court has given a judgment. He has given a punishment for two years. And as per the rule, if any person goes to jail for two years, after coming out of the jail for the next six years, he is not eligible to contest any election. In this case, it is a Rahul Gandhi who is a 
already a mp and is also next pm candidate so it is in news for couple of days even two days back the in the hindu paper there was a big article on this rahul gandhi case okay next these are the gk points you need to self study so in the particular passage we have talked about nero modi because rahul gandhi statement they have given about nero modi he talked about lalit modi so you you need to know who are these people what they have done and we have discussed about representation of people act this is important we have talked about ipc section when it was enacted crpc when it was enacted the difference between these two so ipc section simply talks about the punishment it is a rule book that's it and after getting the punishment how to implement that punishment that was mentioned in the crpc crpc talks about the procedure of implementation ipc talks about the type of punishment and election commission of india because this is responsible for implementing this representation of people act next previous defamation cases now rahul gandhi was arrested so you need to know is any other politician or any other leader previously faced this type of restrictions so these are the gk ponders everything linked to the particular passage as we as we are discussing about election commission and rpa recently there is an incident some two months back there was an issue someone filed a petition in supreme court asking that as of now a person a politician can contest in two constituencies at a time like narendra modi contested from varanasi and vadodara rahul gandhi contested from amethi and wayanad so many people will contest from two places if a person one in two places he has to withdraw from one of the position so because a, an mp or mla has to represent only one constituency even if they are winning in two constituencies they have to uh, withdraw from one of the constituency in another, in that constituency which he has withdrawn election commission will conduct by election okay so before 1996 a person can contest from any number of constituencies in india he, he can contest from 10 or 12 or 500 seats at a time before 1996 but parliament passed the judgment uh, parliament amended the law in 1996 they removed that provision so from 1996 onwards a person can contest in maximum of two places okay so as per section 33 of representation of people act now a person can contest only from two places and as per section 70 of rpa a person has to represent only one constituency that means as per 33 if a person can a person can contest from two places if person one in two places as per 70 the person has to choose only one place so this is what rpa is talking about is it clear i have given the additional points also if you have any doubts you can ask me regarding this particular issue so let's move on to another topic it is about same sex marriage you might be aware of this topic it is in news for couple of days couple of months couple of years so this is not the new topic it is in news for couple of days why it is in news now supreme court referred a batch of petitions seeking the legal recognition of same sex marriage to constitutional bench that means some gay couple has filed a petition in the court asking the court to allow them to marry because in india marriage among same gender is not allowed in india marriage is allowed only among two different gender so this gay couple has approached the court asking them to legalize same sex marriage and court has sent that uh, petition to the constitutional bench which has which will be having minimum five judges but on this union government opposed that that means government is not in favor of giving approval to same sex marriage but supreme court said we will discuss about that we will debate on that whether you have to give or not will debate but ultimately making the rule lies with the parliament only okay so what is the issue as of now in india a marriage 
marriage is uh, regulated with the support of so in india marriage is regulated under four different laws one is about hindu marriage act for hindus and sharia law for muslims and christian marriage law for uh, christians and if any person want to marry uh, in different different religions for them special marriage act which is displayed on the screen that means if hin two hindus a man and woman who belongs to hindu community if they want to marry for them there is a law hindu marriage act if muslims for them sharia law christians Christ, uh, christian marriage act if hindu muslim want to marry or muslim christian or christian hindu for them there is a special marriage act that means special marriage act is to encourage inter religious marriages it is to regulate inter religious marriages because why we have to make different laws why there is a hindu act why there is a muslim act christian act because in india we believe we see marriage marriage is based on culture rituals the marriage is guided by culture traditions rituals ethics morals so because to protect all these things we have created these marriage acts and what is marriage is meant for why we have to marry so generally as per a people uh, it is marriage is a legal recognition of a couple for reproduction it's a legal recognition of a couple for uh, living the next uh, 50, uh, 50 or 60 years of life it is a legal recognition for transferring the assets among them each other so it is it is a, it is a legal contract marriage is a legal contract between two people so if anyone wants to uh, separate again there is a divorce they can uh, based on this particular marriage act they can approach uh, go, go to court for divorce that means if you want to unite or if you want to separate so based on the religion we have different acts different rules different regulations because marriage is guided based on culture ethics rituals so and the definition of marriage which was given in all these acts the definition of marriage is the agreement between the legal the social contract between two different genders this is the definition that means marriage is not a gender neutral marriage as per the law marriage is a marriage is defined as the union as the agreement between men and women male and female two different genders if even that was legally valid for special marriage act special marriage act is only for inter religion not for inter caste also if you want to do inter caste marriage you have one particular religion because different caste will be having in one religion only so this special marriage act is only for inter religion but not for gender okay so this same sex couple the gay couple or lesbian couple or transgender couple as they doesn't fall under the opposite gender category so if a men and women want to marry they have special marriage act or different marriage acts but if the men and men wants to marry so who is female and who is male we cannot differentiate right so that is the reason that is the reason why we have um, we we are not are recognizing them as a uh, there is no legal provision for them because as per the laws the definition of marriage itself about two different genders if same sex if same gender wants to marry we don't have any law why we don't have any law because our marriage is based on traditions it is based on customs it is based on culture so what they are asking then why they are asking to marry because they say already these lgbtq people they are facing discrimination in the society so to reduce the discrimination to get legal approval from the government they are asking for recognition of a marriage so this is one reason they want to reduce the discrimination first second if they marry they can able to get access to some other benefits what are those benefits they can adopt a child in india if to adopt a child we have a again law adoption law only married married couple married people can able to adopt a orphan so if same sex couple if they are unable to marry they cannot adopt the children so they want adoption rights and they want transfer rights property transfer of property rights suppose 
uh, if a normal couple in case of a sudden death of a husband or wife the entire property will be transferred to another partner suppose some this husband and wife his, if husband suddenly dies the property of the husband will be transferred to either children or either wife but in case of this gay couple if they don't if they if they cannot can unable to marry how can they transfer the property to the partner so these are some of the uh, questions raised by this same sex couple so government said that already they decriminalize section 377 earlier as per this section if a same gender people if any involve if anyone involved in homosexual activity that means sexual activity among the same gender if anyone involved in homosexual activity there is a punishable offense they, they can be sent to jail so in 2018 and supreme court under navtej singh johar case court openly said that yes 377 is not legal so they have removed the 377 that means from 2018 onwards they legalized the homosexual activity they legalized the living relationship among the same gender people so already they have some valid point if anyone discriminates the homosexual couple they can directly approach the court because section 377 is banned now it is court has legally recognized their living relationship only thing is marriage was not legalized the thing is because of the definition of marriage because of the culture uh, right moral rituals everything uh, which supports this marriage okay and they say why, what about the adoption suppose if same sex couple if if two men got married and uh, if they are eligible for adopting a child suppose they have adopted the boy what happens if they sexually abuse the boy because already they are gay if they adopt a boy if they abuse the boy who is responsible for that there is also a problem and coming to transfer of property even without marriage you can transfer your property to the person whom you like you can give the property as a gift you can give you can write a will that means after the death of a person the property will be transferred to the concerned person so all every possible things are already in existence now but still they want to get married for no reason so it is a larger debate so government said the time is not right now how to make law on this because in india 80% of the people are living in rural areas we are which are uh, less literate less un, less educated and people have lot of uh, unawareness so if you make it legal still people discriminate because see already we have laws which are in favor of which are against discrimination article 15 which abolishes the untouchability but still in some villages people are following that we have abolished discrimination based on caste but still in many villages people discriminate the lower caste people so discrimination is everywhere whether it is a law or not because why there is a discrimination there is no awareness among the people so government have to take steps to increase the awareness the government has to take step to increase the education in urban areas you might not see all these sort of discrimination only few instances but discrimination will be more in rural areas because of lack of awareness so first government has to debate on the topic government has to generate opinion from the larger section of people then only it can able to take the decision okay and already they say same sex couple we are also humans we we also have right to equality article 14 is talking about right to equality if you are able to allow different gender people to choose their person why are you not allowing us and article 14 which talks about right to equality is not absolute fundamental rights are not absolute everything has a limitation okay so they say even though you are a human being even though you are a human being you cannot marry whomever you want because marriage is linked to the culture marriage linked to some other laws so so because it is not absolute we may not make law which is in favor of you people that is the statement of the government okay
so it is about article 14 and 15 which talk article 14 talks about right to equality based on this only the same sex couple want to legal, legalize the marriage article 15 talks about abolition of untouchability already untouchability was abolished that means we have removed the discrimination but still they are facing the discrimination already we have a law which protects the dignity of a person but still people are facing this that is because of lack of uh, awareness and if anyone got discriminated they can simply file a case on the person who discriminated them they can send the people to jail okay this is what the same sex marriage is about so these are the things you need to know lgbtq day already in favor of those people we have uh, celebrating we are celebrating the particular day as lgbtq day you need to know which is that day and lgbtqs have a separate flag which is that flag and recently some countries have legalized the same sex marriage some countries ban them you need to know what are those latest countries and in india we did not legalize the marriage we only legalized the living relationship is it clear any doubts so we are discussing the issue which is required for exam exam point of view only because we can debate on this issue for hours of hours of time but thing is we know we know require all we don't require all those data we require only some points which are useful for exam so that we are discussing now okay yeah next topic is about manipur issue so you might have seen there is a lot of violence in manipur people fighting with each other recently they have uh, some people of manipur they have paraded the women nakedly in manipur and now it is in news those people were sent to jail but it it make a big issue so why there is a violence in manipur this is because of reservation st reservation just a minute yeah it is because of st reservation in manipur let us look into the issue of manipur issue is very simple the some people want st status for some benefits for all for that benefits people are fighting each other so why they want reservation let us look so as assume this is the manipur which is completely filled with hills and in between the hills there is one valley it is impal valley so this valley is only 10% of the land and remaining hills are 90% of the land that means 90% of the manipur is filled with hills and 10% of the manipur is plain which is a valley so if it is a hill definitely it comes under forest area it is a property of central government right you cannot purchase the hills right you cannot purchase the land on the hill if government gives you you can use that if government did not give you cannot use that and in manipur it is completely filled these hills are filled with forest forest area so forest is the property of the center you cannot own that so if you look into the population 64% of the population in manipur are metis 64% of the population in manipur are metis and 36% of the population in manipur are different communities called kukis somis nagas bodos these are tribal communities these are tribal people and these metis these are simply obc and scs so these 64% people are living in this 10% land these 64% people are living in 10% land 64% people are living in 64% people are living in 10% land and 36% people are living in 90% land and we have one act forest rights act which was passed in 2006 as per this act if any tribal people living in the forest land for more than 75 years that means the tribal family their ancestors the grandparents if any tribal family living in forest land for more than 75 years these people are eligible to own the forest land for 4 acres of land government will be giving 
four four acres of land to the family who are living in the particular forest area for 75 years that means all the tribals all the sts scheduled tribes they are eligible to get own the forest land but non tribes like obc oc scs they are not eligible in manipur 64% people are not sts only 36% people and these 64% people they are living only in 10% land these 64% people are living only in this 10% land that means they can only able to buy and sell this land only they cannot able to enter this 90% of the land they can able to buy this 90% of the land that is the problem because they are not sts but they are dominant community 64% population majority of the population are living in minority land so that is the reason why they are asking st status so if they get st status they can able to own forest land which improves them economically okay and next reason why they are demanding now actually the problem is they are not demanding now before 1947 when india did not get any independence when india is under british rule these maities are sts only these maities are sts only before independence but when india got independence when manipur joined with india they lost the status while the time of joining with india government recognized them as obcs and scs and they also did not find any problem with that because whether they are obc sc or st everyone will get reservation right they everyone is eligible to get government job everyone is able to get educational institutions because everyone is getting reservation benefits so there is no problem with them but the problem is in 2006 in 2006 government made this bill which provides reservation to the sts which provides land ownership to the sts so now already they are sts earlier but when the jo- time of joining with india they lost that so now they are unable to get that ownership of land so they are asking government to give st status from 2006 onwards so government appointed one committee and that committee has given a uh, report in 2011 what is that report that committee said yes these maities are already sts earlier now they lost their they lost the status now it is the time to give them reservation benefits it is the time to give st status to them the committee has given the report so in order to identify a particular community as sts first state the report to register general of india who calculates the census man pop the person who is calculating our population count that is a, he is a person and that person has to send the report to national commission on scheduled tribe and this person has to send the report to a cabinet and if cabinet approves in order to identify a particular yeah, in order to identify a particular community as a tribal group these six stages we have to follow state government from there to tribal affairs minister from there to census commissioner ncst then there to union minister uh, cabinet union cabinet from there to president ultimately president will give the approval so all these six stages has to be passed every person has to accept to recognize a particular community as a tribal community so as per article 342 these the president got his power as per article 342 so as per article 342 only president can give approval to a particular community it is the responsibility of the president to protect the tribal and these tribals are also having extra powers extra protection schedule 6 of the constitution schedule 6 of the constitution protects the tribal community from the state government so president will directly rule this schedule 6 so these are the benefits and ultimately in 2006 through fra they can own the land so in 2011 the particular committee has given the report 
stating that mates are eligible to get sc status but the problem is the state government did not send the bill did not send the proposal to the center so center government did not take any decision so now in 2023 recently manipur high court has given a statement why are you not approving st status to these mates that means manipur high court is in favor of giving st reservation to the mates if they get the reservation what happens all the people who are already tribals who are those kukis zomis nagas bodos all these people are already sts if this 64% people got reservation these people again will become minor, minority they may lose the dominance over the forest am i right or wrong if this 64% people gets the st status already these are large population group they will become dominance these people will become minor minority that is the reason why these people don't want this community to get st status so these people are protest these people started protesting against the high court statement because these people are protesting against the livelihood of mates mates also started prote uh, protesting so the protest turns violent they are attacking each other these tribal people are attacking mates and mates are attacking tribals in this process only this mates community has captured two women and paraded them nakedly recently these clashes among the tribals and not tribals led to the capture of these women these women belongs to kuki community these women are tribals and the mate is the men who captured them are mates okay so these people because of this clash they have paraded the women now ultimately they went to jail now this is the main issue of manipur am i clear any doubts here did you understand the issue issue manipur issue yeah now there is one more issue in manipur what is that it is regarding soo suspension of operations suspension of operations actually before this present issue earlier there are there are some other issues like these kukis nagas zomis they want to separate from the manipur they want a separate state kuki la kuki land zomi land naga land naga lim actual naga land is already there naga lim so all these tribal community they want to separate from the manipur they want a separate state for them so to achieve them these communities have started a, has started procuring weapons they have formed a group kuki national army naga national army zomi national army all these groups have procured the weapons they started protesting in order to keep that violence under control in order to maintain peace central government has imposed apspa armed forces special powers act through this act military will get the ultimate powers military can kill whomever they want if they did not listen to them if any person did not listen to military military can simply kill the person this is the ultimate power for military because of this provisions there is a violent clash between this military and the armed groups to reduce the violence central government made an agreement with the people that is called tripartite agreement central government made an agreement tripartite agreement between tripartite mean among three between central government state government and all the insurgent groups as per this agreement central government will withdraw apspa state governments will try to maintain peace for that purpose all these armed forces has to surrender the weapons has to come to the government control they have to live peacefully so until now this was started in 2008 this was started in 2008 so until now it is going peaceful and so this agreement is called suspension of operations that means central government will stop all its operations so now the because of the violent protest between these two communities central government withdraw this soo 
because people are making bomb blasts people are using weapons so why to central government sit silently so they removed they suspend they removed this uh, agreement they withdraw this agreement now government send paramilitary forces and military to that particular place and now they are trying to ensure peace in that particular region okay for that purpose government has used article 355 Article 356 talks about president rule. That means the state government will be suspended. The activities of the state will be going to the center. But Article 355 is just one step before the 356. It is the duty of the government, central government, to maintain peace and security. So central government can use paramilitary force if there is a violence for any reason. So by using this article, central government send these paramilitary forces if still if they did not control the violence then by using 356 president rule will be imposed so this is what happened in manipur and you need to know some gk points so this is gk pointers mighty is at the largest community the language this is a scheduled language in india we have 22 scheduled languages mighty is one among them and the capital is impal which is a valley these are the major festivals of manipur and this is the march lot of manipur so this these are some basic details these are some basic details and finally there is a person who is trying to mediate between the uh, among the government and the armed group that person is called interlocutor called who is ab mathur who is the ex chief of ra ex special secretary of the ra and you need to know when did manipur join with india manipur cm and governor when did manipur, uh, who is the king at the time of joining manipur in india what are the different conflicts these are the self study because this is not directly linked to the manipur crisis but these are some points gk points which you may to focus is the issue clear any doubts in this issue yeah if you did not understand just uh send a message i will write to explain again okay i am trying to uh, cover all the points next right to health act recently rajasthan government passed a act which legalizes which legalizes the uh, health uh, fundamental it announced that fundamental right uh, health is a fundamental right this is the first state government to openly passes the bill which makes health is a fundamental right so it is giving why, why it is in news because doctors are protesting against this bill doctors are protesting against this bill indian medical association is supporting the doctors so why doctors are protesting what what is the problem with this bill so actually this bill is trying to protect the rights of both doctors and patients how first first it is a legal the state is legally obligated to protect these rights i will explain comprehensively see before this act suppose if a patient was taken to the hospital during the time of treatment as suppose assume the patient died unfortunately most of the cases the relatives of the patient will beat the doctors right have you seen these incidents anyway the patient died suddenly during the treatment the relatives of the patients will attack the doctor so there is no safety for the doctors as per this bill yeah as per this bill now government will protects the doctors government will try to ensure the safety of the doctors that means even if the patient dies during the treatment they cannot attack the doctors it is the it is a right of the doctors it is a protection given to the doctors then 
what are the rights of the patients what type of benefits gives, given to the patients now first if any patient admits in the hospital in emergency doctors have to give treatment at free of cost free of cost treatment to the patient then who will pay the money state government will pay the money to the doctors next if any patients going to the hospitals doctors cannot deny the entry of the patient doctors cannot deny the entry of the patient some in some cases uh, for accident accident cases doctor hospitals will not allow the patients hospitals simply deny that they cannot treat so now onwards no private healthcare facility or any hospital cannot deny the emergency cases they have to attempt they have to uh, uh, take the patient they have to treat the patients and during any time it can be night 1 o'clock or it can be day time if any emergency cases come doctors have to attend the case doctors cannot say it is a odd time doctors have to come there so these are the rights of the patients then why doctors are protesting doctors are getting safety patients are getting free of cost treatment then why doctors are protesting the thing is there is no clarity from the government side as government says give free of cost treatment government will reimburse but what is the timeline of the reimbursement when government will give that money to the doctors if suppose Im immediately after giving the treatment if the doctor is getting the money that is useful for them if government is not paying that money for 2 years or 3 years or 10 years how uh, it, is, it is a loss to the doctors right it is a loss to the hospitals am i right or wrong so there is no timeline for the reimbursement of money and second thing there is no definition of emergency what is an emergency case suppose if a person simply getting the fever and if he says doctor i am in emergency situation please admit me please give me treatment is fever an emergency while simply taking a dolo tablet that you can reduce the fever though it may not cure completely you may reduce the fever so you cannot consider fever as an emergency so if a person comes to the hospital simply for fever doctor cannot come at night 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock right so there is no clarity if doctor cannot if doctor is not attending the emergency case doctor will be punished doctor will be sent to jail so there is no clear cut uh, there is no clarity on the definition so these statements are vaguely mentioned in the bill so government simply said i will reimburse but no timeline government simply says attend the emergency but there is no definition of emergency you cannot consider everything as an emergency am i right or wrong so because of these to get some clarity doctors are protesting against the government for this bill and some important points of this bill is that because of this provision the Rajasthan government is incurring 14.5 crore annual expenditure. That means the government is spending 14 crore every year. And this is the first state to implement this bill. If this is successful, it is like a guiding principle for all the states. Now people in every state will demand for this particular provision. That is, the, that is what is important. And one more important in this bill. This bill mentions about 20 rights of the residents of the Rajasthan because this, this right to health act is only for the residents, not for outsiders. If you belong to Rajasthan, this bill is applicable for you. If you belong to any other state, this is not applicable. As per this bill, it's the right of the patient. Doctor have to inform the patient about all the possible consequences. If you get this treatment, this is the side effect. If you get this treatment, this is the issue you have to face after informing all the possibility outcomes the patient has the doctor has to take the sign from the patient and right to seek information the president the the patient has a right to access all his medical records some hospitals will not give the medical records to the patients if they ask for the report doctor says 
first admit in the hospital or get the treatment then only we will give the records without knowing what is happened to them without seeing the records how can the patient take the decision so the patient has the right to seek information and it is the right of the patient to maintain data confidentiality doctors cannot leak the information to outsiders suppose if a patient admits to the hospital if the patient's blood group is very rare and he has very healthy kidney if the doctor gives the data to the mafia medical mafia that medical mafia may kidnap that person for kidney so anything can happen right so doctors has to protect the data it is the confident doctors have to maintain the data confidentiality and right to discrimination free treatment suppose if any patient admits in the hospital under medical uh, private, uh, government medical insurance doctors will attend the case in a secondary day, secondary basis first doctors will give importance to the person who is paying cash second importance will be given to the government insurance schemes in this case as per this act you cannot discriminate the patient for any reason you have to give treatment at same uh, you cannot discriminate the patient you cannot discriminate the treatment am i clear and this is the responsibility of the state government <coughs> state government has to provide proper funds state government has to provide proper medical infrastructure state government has to create authorities state government has to ensure human resource that means it has to ensure required number of doctors nurses staff everything which is required to implement this and if any patient is facing issue state government has to create a grievance redressal system so that patient can complain on doctors so it is a responsibility of the state to provide funds to maintain authorities to maintain all those things so right to health already health is mentioned all the health is a part of article 21 article 21 talks about dignified life so anything which is just a minute ma just a minute yeah sorry for the inconvenience so article 21 talks about dignified life so to live a dignified life whichever is important everything comes under article 21 so without a proper health how can you live a dignified life so right to health is a part of dignified life article 21 though it is not openly mentioned you have to consider it is a implicit meaning and article 38 and 47 which are directive principles of state policy it promotes for the welfare of the people it promotes welfare of the people it promotes additional nutrition and health needs that means these are indirectly supporting the right to health and in 1996 supreme court said it is the responsibility of the government to provide proper medical aid for the patients that means this right to health act is in consistence is in accordance with the all existing provisions as per article 21 38 47 and supreme court guidelines so this is not something which is out of syllabus it is already in parallel with the constitutional provisions and 15th finance commission also recommended we have to openly declare right to health as a fundamental right now right to health implicitly mentioned in article 21 but we have to create a separate article for that we have to openly say right to health is a fundamental right this is the recommendation of 15th finance commission and one more recommendation is that as of now health is a part of state list that means only state governments can take the decision on health but not the center so if you keep the keep the health in concurrent list both states and center can take decision on that so as of now only state is taking decision what center is doing center is only making the law already center is implementing the scheme ayushman bharat through which it is a center is providing a insurance but not a treatment that means if you keep this health under concurrent list similar laws can be made by the center and already in 2018 national human rights commission has given 17 rights of the patient now this right to health act has given 20 rights but human rights commission has given 17 rights so already that means this right to health act is based on the recommendations of different personalities different constitutional authorities yeah okay i am back so now the next topic is ordinance on delhi so recently 
uh, central government has made an um, uh, ordinance it passed a bill which was an amend uh, sorry it passed an ordinance which is against the delhi government so delhi government approached the supreme court and already supreme court categorically given a statement in favor of delhi so what has happened here so first let us know the structure of the india uh, structure of this government functioning we have state governments in the state for every state government we have there is a cm which is direct who is directly elected by the people and one governor who is appointed by the center president will appoint the governor to each and every state and president will do that based on the recommendation of the prime minister so president cannot take his own decision based on the recommendation of the prime minister president will appoint the governor so what is the role of the governor here governor has to approve the bills which is passed by the assembly so that the bill will become an act if governor did not sign the bill the bill will not become an act so if only after signature of the governor then only state government can implement all the uh, policies schemes etc etc so if state government is in favor of central government governors will also function without any issue but if state governments are opposition to central government then governors will try to uh, destabilize the state by not giving his uh, signature on the bills already there was an issue there was an issue in uh, west bengal T telangana tamil nadu kerala and delhi all these states are not are against the bjp center is under the control of bjp and states are anti bjp so by using these governors center is trying to control the states this is what happening so that is a problem of this delhi also as delhi is a union territory delhi has lieutenant governor instead of governor delhi has left lieutenant governor but delhi has assembly also we have two union territories which have assemblies pondicherry and delhi and there is one more union territory which also should ha should has to maintain assembly but because of disturbances there was no election that is jammu kashmir <coughs> when jammu kashmir state was divided into union territory jammu kashmir got assembly but because no elections was happened so it did not have any cm but as of now cms are there only for delhi and puducherry so puducherry is far away from the center so there is no issue but delhi the problem with delhi is that it is the land of central government as well as the state government for a time being we call delhi as a state because for our uh, convenience we, uh, union territory government it is difficult to pronounce so for a time being assume delhi as a state so delhi is the land of central central government as well as state government the same land prime minister parliament and president is there in the on the same land cm of delhi lieutenant governor and assembly is there so who has to rule the people of delhi that is a problem here as per the rule as actually how delhi got the cm different union territories they are directly under rule by president they don't have any assemblies but delhi has an assembly it is as per article 239 in 1987 there was a recommendation by balakrishna committee as yes, balakrishna committee 1987 they recommended to give status of uh, statehood to the delhi so based on the recommendation in 1991 by amending 69th amendment act uh, by inserting article 239 aa delhi got its powers delhi got assembly delhi got chief minister delhi got lieutenant governor everything is based on article 239 which was passed in 1991 69th amendment act so as per this act except public order police and land remaining everything will be under the control of the state so because delhi has the, the president lives in delhi prime minister lives in delhi it is there is a lot of security issues are there so to protect to maintain that law and order to maintain that peace 
the police government was kept under central government control in every other state in telangana andhra pradesh west bengal etc police is under state government control police is under state government control so ap police telangana police west bengal police like that but delhi though they have delhi police that is under the control of the center so delhi police doesn't function under the state delhi police reports to the center okay because of security aspects so public order police and land except these three things on remaining everything delhi has a control this was mentioned in article 239 but what is problem now now government made an ordinance through this the services civil services of delhi will be transferred to the central control lieutenant governor power was increased these are the two contestants two contentious provisions generally the recruitment of ias ips officers will be done by the center upsc exam through upsc examinations ias officers and ips officers will be appointed but these officers will be appointed in the state when they went into particular state the internal transfer will be done by the state government but not the center ias officers ips officers will be transferred to different districts within the state is done by the state now central want to take that control from the delhi because delhi government is implementing all welfare schemes delhi government is providing free bus facility to the women delhi government is giving free electricity up to 200 units it is giving free drinking water up to 500 to 600 liters for every family so delhi government is taking all welfare measures so so that in future next elections also delhi government may won because of the positive uh, steps taken by the government now central government wants to destabilize the delhi so by transferring the ias offices and ip ips offices from time to time so delhi government uh, delhi government so the delhi government may not implement the schemes properly if ias offices are under the control of center why would they uh, listen to the words of cm so there is a problem and if the role of lieutenant governor is increasing already lieutenant governor is trying to uh, destabilize the government if the role of governor is increasing then there is no uh, necessity of cm so they went to the court and court already said that yes as per article 239 people elected the cm of delhi so it is the responsibility of the cm to take care of the welfare it is the responsibility of the cm to take care of the services so central government cannot make any law in favor of uh, withdrawing the powers except the police la, public order and land remaining all other aspects will be directly under the control of uh, state government but not the center this was categorically mentioned by the supreme court so this is what happened in delhi am i clear did you understand the topic yeah next panchayat elections in west bengal you might have seen in the news west bengal in west bengal recently there was an election but there was a lot of violence among the different party workers so what has happened in west bengal why there is a lot of nonsense what is panchayat elections so panchayat elections are basically for promoting grassroots democracy generally before 1993 elections were conducted only for state uh, state government central government president and prime minister uh, president and vice president election commission would conduct elections only for central government state government president and vice president but within the state we have districts we have mandals we have villages so to give powers to that levels also to give powers to that district level to mandal level and village level in 1993 central government amended the act the 73rd constitutional amendment act by inserting schedule 11 in the constitution so through 73rd amendment act central government has given constitutional authority to the villages districts and mandals to conduct elections so within the states for different levels 
to conduct elections we have created state election commission so it is the responsibility of the state election commission to conduct elections within the states but election commission is for cm as central assembly elections parliament elections president and vice president but sub, sub uh, lower elections like uh, district elections mandal elections and village elections central government says state election commission will conduct elections now the problem is in west bengal we have 3300 gram panchayats 3300 villages in which for every all together we have 63000 seats in every village there are number of people who will contest for one seat for one seat 10 10 20 people can contest so there are availability of 63000 seats which can go up, the contestants can go up to 1 lakh or 2 lakhs but to file nominations state election commission has given only 10 to 20 days of time that means the timeline which is allowed to submit the not, uh, submit the files is only 10 to 20 days within 20 days how can 2 lakh people will file the nomination so it is highly impossible for the election commission to conduct elections so people felt that state government is trying to influence the state election commission so that the uh, time the gap between the notification and application has reduced so this gap will be effectively used by the state government to allow only those candidates to allow only their candidate to contest elections so because there is no sufficient time period for nominations only ruling party candidates may file the nominations only they will contest the elections only they will will they will win so it is useful for the west bengal government to contest the next election they will win in the next elections this is the problem so to oppose this there is a violence and people are fighting each other this is the issue is that issue clear is this issue clear for everyone yeah what are the rules so what is panchayat raj institutions you need to know panchayat raj institutions means conducting elections this district uh, district par dis, jilla parishad mandal parishad village parishad these three comes under panchayat raj institutions so who is state election commissioner of west bengal and who is the central election commissioner central election commissioner we have three three people and one is the chief two are the subordinates and what are the articles mentioned for them in the constitution so what are the constitutional provisions for pra pra means panchayat raj institution as i said 73rd amendment act schedule 11 ulb means urban local bodies that means municipal corporations municipalities cantonment zones housing boards all this this is these are for cities so that is part of 74th amendment act schedule 12 and who is the cm and governor of west bengal these are the gk pointers you need to know the issue is simple state election commission did not give enough time so opposition party thought this this limited time is only supports ruling party but not other people so elections may not conduct in a fair manner so they start creating violence that's it. that's the issue next next topic is about cbi central bureau of investigations recently tamil nadu government withdraw the general consent given to the cbi what is the general consent first of all let me know who is cbi what is the role of cbi what is the role of cbi what are the obje- what is the objective of cbi what work it, it will do i did not get any answer what is the role of cbi issue currency it is not central bank amma it is central bureau of investigation yeah investigating corruption cases actually the very purpose the formation of cbi is that it is created to uh, prevent the corruption cases and in the later stages the criminal cases also given to the cbi so cbi is basically formed to investigate corruption cases and now it is investigating all types of cases so cbi belongs to recently cbi arrested a person from tamil nadu 
called Sentil Balaji. He is a minister of Tamil Nadu. CBI arrested this person. So because in Tamil Nadu, the party which in power is uh, DMK, who is against the center, who is against the BJP. So they thought that BJP is trying to use CBI to destabilize the state government. So they have withdrawn the consent. So what is that consent? So CBI actually is a part of Delhi police. CBI doesn't have any separate act. CBI doesn't have any separate act. CBI is a part of Delhi special police. As I already said, Delhi police comes under the central government. But the jurisdiction of Delhi police restricted to only Delhi territory. Delhi police can solve any case, can file any uh, charge sheet, anything. Only in, in Delhi, it cannot come outside the Delhi. CBI is also a part of Delhi. CBI is also a part of Delhi police. But CBI is responsibility to investigate corruption cases. So all over India, there is a corruption. CBI has to travel entire India. But CBI rules, as per the law, CBI will be restricted only Delhi. So central government made a provision. Section 6 of the Delhi Special Police. As per this provision, as per this provision, Delhi police cannot go beyond the jurisdiction of Delhi. It can solve any cases in all central establishments. Okay. So central CBI is a part of Delhi police. It can investigate cases in entire India only after taking approval from the state governments. General consent of the state governments. That means every year, state governments will give permission to Delhi once for entire year. So after getting the permission, CBI can enter to any state, investigate any state. That is called general consent. If state governments did not give that permission, CBI cannot solve the cases. CBI cannot investigate the case. Then if there is any corruption case in particular state, how do CBI will do? So CBI has to produce documents to the state governments and it has to show evidences. After that, it has to take permission from the state. Then only CBI can solve that case. So if the state government is giving consent, there are two types of consent, general consent, case by case consent. General consent will be given once per year so that the entire year CBI can solve the cases. So in this case, Tamil Nadu withdraw that consent. That means earlier Tamil Nadu has given the consent. CBI can able to enter into Tamil Nadu for investigation. That is the reason why that minister Sentil Balaji was ar ar arrested. But now Tamil Nadu withdraw that. Now, if CBI wants to investigate any other minister, CBI has to produce documents to the state government. CBI has to prove that that person is doing wrong things. Then if state government convinced, if state government satisfied with that, state government will be giving approval to CBI so that CBI will investigate only one particular case. That is called case by case investigation. Now CBI, with, now Tamil Nadu government withdraw the consent. So all the cases which already taken by CBI before the withdrawal of the consent can be continued further also. But CBI cannot take the fresh cases then how CBI will investigate the fresh cases. If even after producing the documents, if state government is not giving a permission, how can CBI arrest the person? CBI has to wait for the person to come outside the state. That suppose the person wants to go to Delhi or the person wants to go to USA. He has to go to airport. Airport is a central government property. If a person is traveling from Tamil Nadu to Andhra Pradesh, he has to come outside Tamil Nadu. In Andhra Pradesh, CBI can arrest the person. If a person is traveling in a train in Tamil, within the Tamil Nadu, railway is a central government property. So CBI can arrest the person. So in all the central establishments, CBI can arrest. Or if a person is coming out of the state, then CBI can arrest. So CBI has to wait until the person is going to central establishments. That is called the general consent. All this is because CBI is a part of Delhi police whose jurisdiction is restricted to Delhi. And there is one more investigation agency called NIA, National Investigation Agency. 
it is the uh, they will investigate the terrorist activities and this is a all india agency it doesn't require any special permission it can go to any state anywhere whenever they want because it is all india agency but cbi is a delhi agency okay this is the issue so gk points you need to know the headquarters and chief of cbi headquarters and chief of nia how many states withdraw the general consent how many states has given recently tamil nadu withdraw the consent similarly some other states also withdraw their consent like west bengal etc so you need to know what are those states and as we are discussing about tamil nadu who is the cm and governor of tamil nadu so these are the gk pointers which you need to know for this particular issue am i clear so you have any doubts you can ask me we have 10 minutes of time if you have any doubts you can ask me we have created this worksheet in actual uh, clat exam format we have given a passage when we have asked the questions but the for answers for these questions you cannot able to get in this passage so don't read this passage passage is only for your understanding reference and try to solve the answers i have given all the required information uh, which is uh, necessary to solve all these questions please solve these answers if you are unable to solve i will explain you in the next class you can always ask me the doubt in the next class also okay first try to solve these answers on your own if you can able to solve well and good if you are unable to solve you can ask me in the next class okay am i clear yeah okay then so you may leave and we will meet in the one more class in the next week thank you if you have any doubt you can ask me you raise your hand i will explain okay and don't forget to subscribe to this telegram channel because it is useful to stay updated with the current affairs okay please subscribe to this either scan the qr code or just type abhyas law prep in the telegram so that you you will land on the abhyas law prep page yeah take care we will meet in the next class